Hey, Las Vegas, thanks for joining us here on Realty Check, your local Las Vegas real estate news show. If you're watching us on video, I hope you liked our new little intro there. <laughs> we, we, we had an update to our, our uh, beginning part of the show. Um, so today, thank you for um, tuning in. If you're watching our show, please like, comment, share, tell your friends about us, and welcome back. We're here every Thursday. Uh, we have our, our guest today is uh, Blake Levitt with Keller Williams, the Marketplace One. He's a commercial expert, so we're going to be talking a lot of great stuff on commercial. I am so excited about this, giving our viewers and listeners a taste of different types of real estate, especially in the Valley. Yeah. Yeah. So Absolutely. Nice way for them to diversify and grow. Absolutely. Um, and Tiana, you want to open up and tell us about what we had for numbers this week? Sure. <laughs> like I have those in front of me. Oh, oh wait, first page. Be first page. Okay, <laughs> first we have page. new packets as well. So. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this week we um, are very similar to what last week was. We had some price reductions. We were at 1632 in our price reductions. And then our residential single families um, jumped up yet again to 7,549 houses yes yeah yes. so our stock is built our price reductions and this week um if i want to touch on that i saw more substantial price reductions yes i think that sellers are finally getting it together that one thousand two thousand dollars is not going to draw the buyers that they need in yeah exactly exactly and I've, i finally had sellers that are like hey you know what I want to I I want to do this price reduction now plus let's offer a bonus like they're really they're really getting motivated. So. Yeah, and that's the way it always is, right? By a couple months everything sort of uh, levels out and everybody's on the same page. So just in time for us to shift again. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. A uh, good thing about inventory even though it is high I feel like um, we well we got to the seven thousand point yeah and seven ish we're in the seven ishes right and we've been we've been kind of hovering there so that's good yeah that's good it's, it's not a lot of growth each week but yeah. you know we saw that jump I mean if you think about like uh, recent months when it was you know under three thousand single family homes within the last year it was crazy and now we've uh, got some more stock so yeah yeah good are you seeing a lot of inventory increase in commercial. Not yet, but I've seen stuff take, you know, much longer to sell. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, commercial's a little bit different, I'm sure, as far as, like, the, you know, your average inventory and everything goes. Right. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I want to do, like, commercial 101, like, start from the beginning. Is that cool? Sure. Okay, yeah. cool. Because, um, so, if we're going to talk about commercial, right, we've covered the uh, numbers. We're just going to go right into commercial then. Yes. Sure. Okay, cool. Sure. All right. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, there were some headlines that we were going to talk about, but now that we've started talking to Blake, I'm very interested in this subject only because I know that this is an opportunity for people to grow and diversify. And maybe they didn't realize that this was something that could be available to them. Right. right. But in order to do it, they're going to need to know how. So let's talk about it. So what makes a uh, property considered commercial instead of a multifamily? Like, let's talk like multifamily residences. So multifamily residences, uh, consider residential as two to four units. Right. And, and I've done residential multi-unit, but multifamily is different. Yeah. So multifamily commercial is anything above five units. Okay. Okay. So five units. And then now some of these properties that investors will come in and they'll have like a hundred units in them. Yeah. So there's a vast difference between picking up five units or a hundred units. Definitely. Okay, cool. All much, right. Much larger too. Yeah. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of things that um, go ahead and go into that. So um, first and foremost, I guess, paying for it, right? So you got to find a way to buy this commercial. If somebody's thinking, hey, I want to get multi-units, they're income producing properties, this will help me diversify. Where do they start? So most buyers, uh, they will get a commercial mortgage. Okay. Because that's, you know, the most economical thing to do, you know, instead of pay cash for one property, you can use that same cash and put down and buy, say, you know, three to four properties. Very nice. So how do you start with qualifying for a commercial mortgage? So to qualify for a commercial mortgage, you'll need to be a strong borrower with income and a good credit score. That'll help you get the best rate. And then you'll need a rent roll and a trailing 12-month financial statement on the property. Okay. 
So tell us a little bit about what that means. Like for somebody that's not, that, that's not sure what a rent roll is or a trailing financial statement, what, what exactly is that? So a rent roll is a list of all the tenants on the property and the amount they're paying in rent. Okay. And then a trailing 12 month is basically the last 12 months of revenues and expenses on the property. Right, okay. So let's say, um, just to throw numbers out there, say the property is two million. Okay. Okay. You're looking to qualify for a two million dollar mortgage. That doesn't necessarily mean your income right now has to qualify for that. That property's income has to qualify for that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that that's a li quite a bit different than um, than regular residential real estate and regular regular residential mortgages where you have to qualify. But in this case, the property itself is what is what is getting the qualification. Yeah. So like the borrower's income is a starting point because, you know, they want to make sure the borrower is a good borrower. But mostly they go off of the property's income because they want to make sure that, you know, the income coming in from the property can pay for the mortgage. OK, absolutely. That makes sense. And what are what are they looking at in terms of down payments? So down payment, it varies. It's all based on the money coming in from the property. But what I'm seeing right now is anywhere from 25 to 50% down. Okay, okay. So the more income that's coming in from the property, the less down you'll need. Absolutely. That makes okay. sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, our market for multifamily, what does that look like? Or do we have a strong multifamily market? I mean, yes. I know we've got lots of single family residents in the Valley, but tell me about that, our market here. I do see multifamily increasing on the market, but it's not, you know, a crazy number. Probably in the whole Valley, there's probably, I'd say anywhere between 40 to 50 properties listed. Really? Wow. That's, that's not a lot. Yeah, it's not a lot. <laughs> Those numbers are a little different than the residential sector for yeah. sure, for sure. We're in the thousands, seven thousands. <laughs> seven thousand five hundred forty-nine. Yeah. So, um, so in that, in, in, in that, because of rents and rents being so high, is that, is that definitely driving demand for the market or it has been driving demand for that market? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And another thing too is a lot of investors have been purchasing multifamily since it's uh, recession proof. So, you know, no matter what economy we're in, everyone will still need a place to live. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that brings me to my next question. What does that mean for the growth of rents within that multifamily section? Because they're going up all over the place. Is when you get those and they get your mortgage, they take that into consideration. So I guess that would be the same as anything else, right? Buy low and sell high. You want to get a property that has lower rents when you purchase it, but you want it to be able to increase, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the higher the income coming in, the more the property's worth. Okay. So where with residential, they use, you know, price per square foot to value the two to four unit properties, where with commercial, it's more, you know, the higher the income, the more it's worth. <laughs> Well, it makes sense, so right? The, the sky's the limit. <laughs> the sky's the limit. <laughs> so in people that are looking to start, um, you know, qualifying for a commercial mortgage, get started in purchasing multifamily, do they have to have a history, like an investment history of some sort before, um, before they get into that? Not really. That would be preferred. But if you don't have any investment history, that's totally fine. Right. So if you had somebody reach out to you, this is their first time, they wanna just jump into it, what would be the first bit of advice you would give them? I would ask, you know, what questions do you have for me and start there. Yeah. yeah <laughs> My question is, how do we start? <laughs> <laughs> so definitely I'll ask them, you know, what's your buying criteria? Um, how many units are you looking for? What's your budget? What, you know, cap rate are you looking for? and go from there. And if they're looking to obtain financing, you know, I definitely have a network of lenders that I can refer them to and they can start getting quotes there. That's great. Cap rate, that's a, that's, that's a great word. We all learned about that in real estate school. And, we did. Uh, <laughs> and so we're very versed on it, but I know there's a lot of times I've mentioned, you know, words or acronyms such as cap rate to someone and their eyes glaze over because they have no clue what that means. Can you explain what that means? Sure, so a cap rate is the revenue minus expenses equals net operating income. So the cap rate is the net operating income on a property divided by the purchase price. Okay, okay, so that, um, and, and then ROI? 
Yeah, basically almost the same thing. Yes. So, yes. for example, if a property's $2 million and the net income is $100,000, the cap rate would be 5%. Okay. Okay, great. Um, that is uh, definitely good for those uh, people that like numbers. I was going to say, <laughs> analytics are going to love this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah They're going to talk to me about how to make money. Give me numbers, charts. I love them all. <laughs> yeah, that's basically all commercial real estate is numbers. Yeah. Right, right, because financially it has to make sense. It's right. not like mm -hmm. a residential property where people are drawn to their home with their heart or the lifestyle that they want to live, the dream of what that's going to be. When you come down to commercial real estate, multifamily, it's about the dollars. Yeah. Definitely. How much money are we going to make, people? Let's yeah. make yeah. it all. <laughs> Guys, let's make it all. Yeah, and, you, and you've got to wrap, wrap your head around those numbers, those formulas, and make sure that they make sense to make sure that you're making a good investment. Right. right. And the bank's going to be looking at that as well oh, yeah. if you're getting a mortgage because those are very important numbers to the bank. Yeah, they'll, they'll look at everything and analyze everything two or three times. So. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Because I'm sure that um, with commercial mortgages, the risk for the bank, the lender, is so much higher than residential. True, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so rents have increased 8% year over year. Rents, when you're um, talking about rents on that, are you talking about like commercial leasing rents or rents as far as like, um, you know, average per unit rent? Uh, rents as far as, you know, multifamily per unit rent. Per unit rent. Okay, so basically like the same as residential rent prices, we've had an increase, um, substantial increases, you know, over and over again. So pretty, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Okay. And then values have increased 21% year over year? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about vacancy rate. What does that mean? So the vacancy rate, that means, you know, the amount of units that aren't currently occupied. So the vacancy rate is about 7%. Mm -hmm. um, earlier this year, it was about 3%. So it was, COVID really pushed the vacancy rate slow, but Oh, yeah. Now there's more units becoming available and more units that need to be leased. Okay. So when it was 3%, and you mentioned that, you know, COVID and with the moratorium and all that, that stuff that was there, mm -hmm. was that 3% vacancy rate? Yeah, there wasn't so many units vacant, but a lot of them weren't making any money, right? <laughs> they weren't getting paid? Yeah, there was, a, there was a good portion, I'd say, that, you know, were COVID delinquent. Okay. Yeah, COVID was the glitch in the matrix. Yeah. Nothing, nothing ever made sense during the two-year period, right? Absolutely. Yeah, during that time, I would say mostly the older properties got hit with COVID, where, you know, the newer multifamily properties, those were pretty strong and people continued paying. Oh, that's good. That's, that's good. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The, um, as far as the, like, the vacancy, is there a formula that the banks prefer? Like, is there a number where they say, if this property has this percentage of vacancy rate, we're not, we're not loaning on it? So a property will have to be at least 80% occupied for a bank to loan on it. That's okay. in most cases. I mean, there are a lot of other lenders that may do lower than that, but, you know, the interest rate's going to be higher. Right. What are ballpark interest rates looking at in commercial mortgages? Right now, I'd say anywhere between 5 to 6%. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, the, so better than residential. I was going to say, so it's similar to resi residential, and that's one of the things that um, I find interesting about this. The residential sec uh, sector seems to have very similar numbers to what's going on in commercial. Obviously, different because you have so much less stock. But I gotta assume you have less investors, right? There's quite a lot of investors still for multifamily. Oh, well, look at that. Good, 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 good. But they um, like. Like you said, it's all about numbers. So if, if it, a good deal is a good deal, no matter what the interest rate is. Right, <laughs> right. You don't have to fall in love with it. <laughs> if they can get it at a good enough price, I think they'd probably be happy with a higher rate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So this is sort of an off the topic, on the topic question for you that I didn't really see in the notes. But when an investor purchases a property, is there a need to come in and renovate the units or it just makes money? You have renters in place. When those renters go, you get rid of them and put new renters in. What, like, is there any additional expenses that they usually make? I know it's subjective to property. Sorry, it's a wide question. So it can go two ways. You know, when you buy a property, you can keep everything the same and just 
you know, keep operating it with the units in classic style, but if the units haven't been renovated, you can renovate them and then charge the market rent for renovated units. Okay, so that's good, because that brings that up to market value. Yeah. And we saw in the residential sector uh, exponential growth in um, rent increases during that past two years. Then you probably saw that then? Yeah, so in 2021, from January to December 2021, the rent increases in multifamily were 25%. Oh, wow. Okay, guys, that's why you don't rent. Let's buy houses when you need me, call me. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's, but that's it's not, a huge It's jump. sort of chill down now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, same with the residential. Okay, good. And the vacancy rate was so low at 3%, so yeah. that's what pushed the rents up because, you know, there was so much demand and not supply. Supply and demand. It yeah. runs everything. And what's kind of interesting about rent is there is no, there's no appraisal. Right. With residential, well, we have a, you could say we could sell this house for this amount. Um, an appraiser has to come and verify the value. With rents, there is really no verification of value other than what's standard for the location and the area and the size. Yeah. So there will be an appraiser appraisal still, but they'll do, you know, what the market rents are in the area, what um, the price per unit of multifamily nearby is trading at, and they'll value it that way. Okay, and then of course, if it's something that's completely remodeled, they'll raise that a bit for that situation. Yeah, so the higher the income, the more it'll be worth. So say if the market cap rate is 4%, then you know it'll definitely be worth more since there's more income coming in. Okay, all right, perfect. And then market cap rates, great, great way to go into that. So um, anywhere from four to 7% on small to mid-sized properties, three to 4% on large 100 unit properties. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure, so the small and mid-sized properties, I'd say are anywhere from five to 99 units. And then the large properties are 100 plus units. So the cap rates on small and mid-sized properties, they're a little bit higher than the 100 plus units because on the 100 plus unit properties, you know, they're, they're borrowing the debt cheaper and those are just institutions buying them from each other. Okay. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense, yes. So um, here, your market's cooled and shifted due to interest rates as well as yeah. our market. So <laughs> very yeah. similar, Let's, very uh, similar indeed. <laughs> where, where were your rates as, a, as opposed to where they are right now? I'd say before the rate shift on the 100 plus unit properties, you could get debt, you know, two and a half to 3%. Oh, wow. Oh, that's delicious. That's a, that's a missed opportunity. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. You, you could definitely <clears throat> make the numbers work on almost any property at that rate. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I, I could only imagine your demand was super high. Yeah. 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 So, um, so yeah, even being at five and six, which is basically where we're at as well it's uh there there's a that it doesn't look so attractive right to go into an investment because mm -hmm. your your return on investment was probably substantially larger yeah the buyers you know they'll definitely want more income to compensate or you know they'll put more money down to make the numbers work yeah yeah same thing that's that's exactly what people are having to do in residential as well wow. so that yeah. makes they um, both seem to be a juggling act of numbers yeah. buy downs and looking for that best deal and really getting into a property that makes sense. Do you have a such thing as that in the commercial world, buy downs, like where the seller will offer, you know, concessions or incentives to buy down rates? Is that is that something that you guys do? Not really, but I have seen where a buyer, you know, can pay a certain amount of money um, so that their rate, you know, stays the same or it doesn't float. There's so many different ways a commercial loan can go, believe it or not. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. I, I figure there's probably different, lots of different avenues, especially when you're dealing with investors and people that want to make money, yeah. you know, on both sides. So. Or the, you know, rate lock too. I know they do that in residential and commercial. They can do that as well, but uh, most of the time they charge a fee in commercial for that. Right. Rate lock is a very interesting subject there because that goes into the fact that Commercial takes forever to close. It's not a 30 day process, right? Right. So what is the standard time from start to finish on a commercial purchase? I would say anywhere between 60 to 90 days. Okay, okay, that's not bad. I've heard some people say like months, you know, some, some really like large properties and like bigger projects take months to close. Yeah, I've 
I've seen that as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's definitely, it's not a, is it because of all of the research that needs to be done? What's the average due diligence on a commercial property? Anywhere from 30 to 45 days. Okay. Yeah. Because there's a lot of research, lots of rent yeah, rolls, exactly. lots of analyzing. I mean, you can't get a home inspector in tomorrow, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, there's a lot more to it um, and that goes into it. So I can I can imagine how that can take so long. So negotiations are they are they? That's pretty? the question I was going to go to next because everything in residential is negotiable. Let's make a deal. How's that work in commercial? Same with commercial. Yay. Everything's everything's negotiable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Does it? Uh, do, do you find yourself in commercial and negotiations for a while? Um, usually wear a few days yeah, yeah, we're yeah good. it doesn't take us long i'm sure that you guys on these these larger projects will definitely be doing that for a lot you know, a lot more time yeah sometimes it could take you know a few weeks going back and forth there was one deal i did in the past where it took almost two months going back and forth and then we finally went under contract and closed it in 75 days Okay. All right. Well, at least you got to close. Bravo. Yeah. That's, those are my favorite words. Clear to close. And the interest rate on that one was only three and a half percent. So, you know, the buyer loves it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is a happy buyer. And that is exactly what you want, right? Right. You want mm -hmm. all of those investors to be grateful for the deal they got and to look at you in this beautiful light. Thanks for helping us. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Come back. We'll do it again. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Years ago, I had assisted someone through a um, commercial lease, and even that, we were going back and forth on that for like a couple weeks of just going back, you know, and um, terms and offers and everything there. And um, and then I realized that I'm leaving commercial to the experts. <laughs> <laughs> it is a different animal. It's 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 a lot more analytical. I I I like the you know me personally. I like working with you know, like, like buyers and sellers and, and homes. And it's, you know, I, I, I can wrap my head around that world so much easier. Right. Um, commercial mm -hmm. is very, very analytical where it's like, if you focus, put your mind to it and definitely get through it. I just don't, I, I don't find happiness there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should find happiness everywhere you can in life. So stay out of commercial. We'll leave it to you. It's all yours. <laughs> Leave it to the experts. And does that bother you guys when residential agents are like kind of mingling in your world? A little Look bit, at the but face. I, if, he's like, I've heard eek. this. No, I've heard this. I've heard that like it's very annoying because they're like, stay in your lane, we'll stay in ours. A little bit, but I mean, if if they're you know, there's very good communication and they can get the deal done. That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But a lot of times, you know, because obviously we have a real estate license, we can do anything whatever we, we want. We, yeah, not yeah. anything we want, <laughs> it but <did>. it's <laughs> not, there's not, there's not a specific license, a specific anything that you have to carry to do commercial or to, to be in the commercial industry versus right. residential. Even property management, you need a different license for, but for right. commercial, you're like, ah, you got a license. Good enough. Go do it. Yeah. Right. You think that there should be more regulation there, but <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the, the, so, so yeah, a lot of people do like mingle in it, but they don't understand it. So right. that can, I, I can only imagine that can be super frustrating on your side trying to deal with that or navigate through that with somebody else that doesn't. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've had, you know, I haven't had too many deals like that. So that's good. I guess that's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I've approached commercial a few different times and every time I was sort of reached with hesitation from mentors and people who were in commercial like, oh, you don't want this headache. Just stay in your lane. And I was like, that's kind of rude. <laughs> you don't tell me what I get to dabble in. I want to try it all. Yeah. My, my summary when I came up, you know, came across that, that little small um, experience was like, if I, if I wanted to do this, I'd have to be all in and like yeah, dedicated definitely. to learning and understanding it and be all for it. And if not, then I need to stay where, where I'm, I'm knowledgeable and, and that's, that's residential. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd, it's, oh, sorry. Please, I, I'd say do what's, do what's best. I mean, if you wanted to get into commercial, you can definitely do it. You just got to a lot to learn. Be committed. Be <laughs> yeah, committed exactly. to the learning. Exactly. exactly. And that's really, that's with anything, right? Yeah. yeah on your you, skill. Yeah. You just have to be committed to learn and understand it. And absolutely, if that's what you want to do, go for it. And but, you gotta, you gotta like numbers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Count me out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See that, <laughs> that right there is, is definitely going to be the deal breaker.
So what are value add properties? So those are properties that have below market rents and or they need renovations. Okay. Okay, so I'd be interested in those. So value add, it's simple. It's basically properties where you can add value and increase the value on the property. Absolutely, like a flip. Yeah, like, like yeah. A, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar, and that's yeah. my wheelhouse in residential, so I love that. If I were ever gonna do, when I do, heh, put out there universe, when I do a multifamily unit, um, I would want something like that that was a little run down or needed some work that I could come in, freshen up, and then get the highest market value for. Mm -hmm. Right. And how do you usually find those properties? Like, where do you where do you look for those? How do you find those? What is the formula for for checking those out? So there are, you know, a, some of them that do come on the MLS, or I shouldn't say some. I'd say about half, but the pricing can be a little bit too high on those. Mm -hmm. But you can find them, you know, on the MLS. But the best way is, you know, contacting the owner directly. So a lot of the deals I do are off market deals and their value adds. So I already have a buyer. I approach the owner and, you know, we make the numbers. If we can make the numbers work, we have a deal. Okay, wonderful. And they're on the MLS as rentals because commercial properties are not on the MLS. Like so there's a there's a different MLS oh, for commercial. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's yes. called LoopNet. Oh, LoopNet. So yes, I, I was familiar with LoopNet. I, I guess I never really clicked it as being an MLS, but that make, totally makes sense. Yeah, that's like the the Zillow and residential is the LoopNet and commercial. Yeah. <laughs> so widely hated. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, no, de definitely. So LoopNet is your, that's your hub. That's where, that, that's where, that's where all of the properties are, are going to be at. Yeah, and there's also a couple more MLSs that are starting to gain a lot of traction called Crexy and RealNex. Okay. So with commercial, there isn't just one MLS, there's actually multiple mm -hmm. where you can search and sometimes each site has different properties. So it's always good to you know, check as many sites as possible. Yeah, and one thing I've learned too is um, with LoopNet specifically is they have a free service and they have a subscription service. Right. And you definitely, if you're working with a commercial agent that is uh, versed and you know really does commercial full time and 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 often and has experience, they're going to have the subscription service, yeah. which is going to give them access to a lot more than right, anybody's yeah. going to get with that free service. So that's something that you, you know, definitely want to make sure that you're doing when you're looking for an agent to represent you in commercial. Yeah, definitely. It's I have that subscription. It's really expensive, but it it's is. worth it because I can provide that service to clients and find them properties they're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen I've seen what's on the the free service. It's not there's not a lot there. <laughs> well, like anything else, right? It's the right tool for the right job. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Blake, what is there anything that we didn't cover that you feel like is uh, is important things that we should uh, we should touch on? Um, I think we covered a lot. Basically, we did. what I think a lot of people will get out of this is, you know, the higher the income, the more the property's worth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, and that's that, that's what you're that's what you're in it for. But again, you're looking for the higher the income, the more cash you're going to be putting out as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, upfront, upfront. So that makes perfect sense. Um, you know, before we end the show, let's just hit some um, some news topics that happened this week. Okay, okay. Um, so these are pretty much you know a lot of the things going on in the news this week was uh, was the same as uh, we've been seeing over the last few weeks. Um, we have uh, mortgage applications are um, definitely at a 22 year low. Wow. Um, you guys are seeing that I'm sure as well in commercial, your applications are down because the rates are up. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah. Um, but there is uh, some some lenders saying that rates may be stabilizing for a while. So yep. hopefully the Fed has you know, stopped in their, in their uh, mission to keep increasing. And um, home home builders are definitely doing, um, you know, holding off a little bit and not seeing um, so much optimism wow. uh, for getting these projects sold. They're not selling out the dirt before anything breaks ground anymore. So. Thank goodness. Wow. Yeah. So we didn't want their egos to get away from them, those yeah. builders. <laughs> are those still lotteries at oh, home no. build places? No, those are oh, done. Wow. Yeah. So now, they're, now they are... Um, 
like offering incentives, like begging us to bring buyers, that's definitely shifted a lot. So. Right, I have a new build under contract right now that you're gonna love this. Okay, so normally when you do a new build and you go under contract, the agent get paid on the base price, not on all of the upgrades. And people can drop 60 to 100 grand on upgrades for those house easy. I just went under contract and I was able to get the entire price with the upgrades for the commission. That's how desperate the builders are right now. That's and I bet good. they're maybe giving you a bonus too. Well, yeah, we get our regular <laughs> co-op and the bonus is that we get paid on the full house amount, not the base price. So that was wow. impressive. But yeah, with our new inventory raising up and then the um, feds put in the pumping the brakes on how much it costs to get money that trickled into their home sector and our mortgage rates. So now it's a level playing field. So if you're looking for a fixer upper, then you're gonna pay below market value like you did historically. And if you want a new build, then you're gonna pay that market value and drop a bunch of money into customizing it. But now there's the option for everybody to get the house and the life that they want versus a few months ago where it was just, give me a house, any house, I'll take it. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, speaking of lotteries, um, so uh, there are lotteries going on right now, yes. but they're in the short-term rental applications. Oh, wow. So now that we have these short-term rental regulations, um, the applications um, to get qualified for an application for a short-term rental, you have to go into a lottery system. So it's going to be opening soon. Um, yeah, it was scheduled to open September 1st, but I think it's opening the 6th now, which is... The 13th. No, I think they open um, on the 6th, but there's something going on online until the 13th. The applications can be obtained on the county's portal beginning on September 13th. Okay. All yeah. right. I th All right. I'm incorrect, but that is still pushed back a bit. And then there's not very many. They're offering up 2,000 short-term licenses in consideration that there was over 10,000 Airbnbs that were operating without a license mm -hmm. until recently. So it's substantially cut down what will be able to be Airbnb. 80% of homeowners who are using their property for commercial lodging would be put out of business. Bum, bum, bum. So that's uh, not good news for those people operating illegal Airbnbs, especially um, with our market shift um, and homes are not selling as quickly as they're selling as they were selling before so so this is their uh sign from above that it's not an airbnb you need it's a multi-family commercial residence you need <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely so it, it it was pretty risky there was a lot of people that um that i knew and talked to that were doing it you know without properly doing what they should have done, taking the right steps. And I was saying like, I feel like that's not going to last long. Like that, I, I'd be, you know, I'd be nervous about a long-term investment on that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it didn't, um, it didn't turn out well. So, or it's not turning out well. So that's, um, that's, that's a little scary, but there is, there's, there's other things. If you're renting it for at least 30 days, then it's no longer considered short term. There's, there's, there's some other avenues you could go at with that. Um, and then uh, last headline that I thought was great, which I loved because I've been um, repeating this a lot, is the market is correcting, not crashing. So Still one of my favorite headlines because yes. even though I'm seeing changes in price or whatever, um, those prices were not realistic because they were over appraised value and they were getting two and three homes in a neighborhood over appraised value. And now we're sort of leveling out to where it would have been had we not gone crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was a much needed correction. So Blake, how do people get reach out to you if they want to talk investing? Sure, so they can reach me by cell phone at 702-809-8387 or they can email me at blake at blakemultifamily.com. Okay, great. And Tiana? Well, I'm always here for you by phone or text you guys, 702-379-9948. You can send an email but, uh, at 702-househunter at gmail.com, but give me a few hours to return that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you guys can reach me, text, email, anything, um, phone call, 702-308-2878. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, share, tell your friends about the show, and we'll see you next week. Yes. Bye.